Hey everybody, it's Tom from MC Things here again, and today we're going to do a, a video showing the MQTT functionality through the MC Things platform. And so, how we're going to show that is we're going to take one of our modules, and as you all know, there is a magnetic switch built into it. We're going to mess around with that with a magnet, and I'm going to attach that to a door and be alerted when that door is open or closed through my MQTT broker. So, next steps we have to do here is actually go set up our MQTT broker and then get into MC Studio and set up the script on how do I get the module to complete that action. So let's get going. Okay, so now we're gonna go set up an MQTT broker and today I'm gonna to use Cloud MQTT. Now, MC Things isn't affiliated with this company, but there's a couple of reasons I wanna use it. First of all, I find it quite simple, easy to use. I like the interface, it's friendly. Um, the other thing I like, as it says in the name, is it is hosted in the cloud. So I don't need to run a local MQTT broker on a server. Um, now in your case, depending on your project, your industry, whatever you might be doing with MC Things platform, you might find that running a, a, a local MQTT broker on a server uh, suits your needs a little bit better. Uh, there's also lots of other of these uh, MQTT brokers out there, so feel free to search around. Maybe you find one that's uh, a bit more tailored to your tastes or requirements. The other reason I'm going to use them is they give a free uh, package for 10 up to 10 connections. So um, it's interesting to see that you can build up your network and they will can handle up to 10,000 connections for a reasonable price. So feel free to check them out. They also have some really nice documentation that explains MQTT. What does it do? How does it work? Kind of all the ins and outs. Uh, so feel free to check out their website there and learn a little bit more. And of course, a quick online search for MQTT will provide you hundreds of different sources of information on how to use it and, and how does it all work in general. So I'm going to move over to my console. Of course, I've already signed up for an account here. Um, now it gives me some information that I want to be able to have access to because down the road, depending on what I want to do, I am going to need to know my server address, username, password, different ports. And the next thing we need to set up here is the users and ACLs. So I'm going to create users. I've created two, Gateway and Tom. Fairly simple, right? Username and password and set those up. This allows your gateway to connect and do things through MQTT, and I'll show you that in a second. The next thing you wanna do is have these users subscribed and have access to ACLs. So in this case, we've given access to Gateway and Tom. I've allowed them access to any topic that starts with MC things slash, and as you can see here, using the hashtag will allow me to they can subscribe to any topic that I have published that starts with MC things slash anything. So it's kind of a nice feature. I'm assuming there's also that ability in other brokers out there, uh, but it really makes life easier when you start doing some testing and prototyping and working with your network and playing around with MQTT. You don't have to go in and, and give these users specific access to specific topics. You can create any topic and they have, as long as you have the starting point and you don't have to use this MC things, you can use anything you want. Um, but it allows me now to just have them have access to any topic that I look at, at uh, publishing. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is go to MC Studio and we are gonna set up some MQTT code to do some really cool things with some modules. Okay, so here we are in MC Studio and of course the power of YouTube, I've already pre-written all my code out uh, so I won't force you to watch me do all that. But feel free to pause this video. You can look at this code, copy it over. We will also post this into the comments section of the YouTube video. And even better, we're going to post this into our forum. And I would recommend and, and ask everybody, go check that out. There's a lot of support questions, some other cool stuff that we're doing there. So, so feel free to do that. You can find the forum through our website. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the read switch, the magnetic switch that's built into the MC module to let us know when a door is open or closed. Now, this is just one of the uh, one of the features of the MC module. There is also a high accuracy temperature sensor built in and an accelerometer. And if you didn't know this, there's also a whole bunch of digital inputs and a bunch of analog inputs. So you can actually start to connect this to other devices, sensors, whatever it might be. And, use, and you can use, control them, you can measure stuff from them because uh, the modules allow for connection through UART, SPI, or I squared C. So um, there's more information of that available on our website. And as I, as I mentioned, we will be putting some more examples and, and visuals and stuff like that on our form. So, so keep an eye on that. So let's walk through this code. Um, you know, essentially what we're doing is looking at any changes in the read switch. We're gonna look at different, you know, sending this through a payload. Um, now, the, 
One thing I want to mention, I have set up so that the LED turns on. The LED that's built into the module turns on when the door is open and will also turn off when the door is closed. Now, purposes of this demo, just to show you the light being on, um, but in your own case, just keep in mind, the longer you have an LED on, uh, even though it's a very small LED, it will start to draw power. So you might uh, be replacing your batteries a little bit more often um, than, than you'd like to if you keep the LED on, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, of course, the great part is, there are small little three volt coin cell batteries that are available uh, you know, pretty much anywhere for, for a cheap price. So um, keep that in mind. The other thing that is very important here is how do we publish this information to our MQTT broker? So this is the, this is the line that we use. It's gonna use our LP LAN, which is that low power local area network. We also call it MC Air, and it's going to publish. And if you remember when I set up my broker, I had given my two users access to any ACL that was MC things slash hashtag. And in this case, it's going to be subscribed to what we're going to do today, which is production room door open or closed. So this is very important. The other thing that's very important is you have to set up your gateway to view your MQTT broker and push this information from your code and your modules up to that broker so you can see it in the cloud. So how do we do that? We go to devices, we go and look at our gateway. I already have mine connected. Then we go to gateway config. Now, as I go in here, I go and put in that MQTT server information that I had from signing up. I'm going to put in my one port, um, which is you know, 14221. There's three ports, if you remember, that we got. And of course, my username and my password that I've, I've given to my devices here. So now I'm going to save that, close this out. Everything should be good there. Um, the other thing I want to show you how to do is uh, I'm going to check the voltage on this battery, of course, because I have the LED going. So every two days, it's going to check it. And and if it seems it finds that the battery is less than 2.2 volts, then it's actually going to alert me through my LP through my IFT service. So on IFT, I've set up a recipe that says when this event happens, production room battery, if that comes in, um, it will alert me on my phone through IFT notifications if you download the app and I will get a notification that that battery is low and then I can go and change it and, and be alerted. So that's a really cool little code, you know, feel free to use that in all your other different projects are using with MC Studio and MC things. So now what I'm going to do, of course, always save the document. You always want to build the application as well. Even if you're just going to debug it, um, always, always recommend to build it. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to embed it. Now I've already done that in the device. So let's show you this in action. All right, guys. So now that we've set up our MQTT broker and we've gone through and done our MC Studio script, I've embedded it onto this device and now I'm gonna actually go ahead and install it. So this is actually our MC module enclosure that's coming soon. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna install the module into the enclosure just like that. And I'm also gonna install the battery in and you'll be able to see that in a second. The red light turned on there. And it just closes up like that. Now if you don't have any enclosures yet, um, you can still do this project by taping or attaching the module up against a door or a window. It could be anything like that. Um, and I'm also going to put the magnet up there as well so that I can mess around with the magnetic field. So let's show this in action. Okay, so now we have our module and our magnets installed in the door. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So we get up here. I have our module in our case up there. And as you can see when I open the door, we have our magnets on the back side. And as per the code, when the door is open, the red light is on. So let's give this a shot and I'll show you how you can look at this on your phone with basically an MQTT app and uh, let's, let's see how that looks. All right, so what I've done is actually on my Android phone, I've downloaded what is called an MQTT dashboard. It's a free Android app that's available and there's a lot of them out there. So as you can see right now, I've got a bunch of different temperatures being read within our office and they're re recording and, and populating um, very quickly within 10 to 30 seconds. But I have also set up our production room door as being open or closed. And as you can see behind me, the door is closed right now. And what we're gonna do is open it up and I'll show you how it actually will say open and closed on my app. All right, so now as you can see on the app, we've got our temperatures coming in and right now our, our production room door is closed. So now when I go to open it, and we'll see the red light turn on up there and instantly my information comes back saying the door is open. So now we can also prove this out when I close the door, light turns off on the module and our door is closed one second ago. Okay guys, so there you go, pretty cool use case using our magnetic switch that's built into the MC module and also relaying that information through MQTT back to my broker and in this case to my phone on an app. 
Uh, so this should give you an example of how you can use the MC module for a whole bunch of different uh, reasons and projects and use cases. Remember, there is a temperature sensor, there's an accelerometer, there's a whole bunch of digital and analog inputs that you can attach to their devices and sensors and start to control them through UART, SPI, and I squared C. Um, please check out our forum, check out our, our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We want to see your use case projects and we're excited to, uh, to hear from you guys. So have a great day and thanks a lot.